Shalom, 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 shalom. First and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim El Shah, Bashim Hakodash. Give a double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutation to all you sincere Akim, Akim across the four winds, pushing his truth with sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, because I'm a guy from a DC camp, coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashim El Shah, Bashim Hakodash, for the elect. Um, this is going to be a quick lesson. Uh, going into the manna, the manna from heaven, and um, you know, especially um, for the newcomers in the doctrine, um, you know, of course, there's a lot that's been going on uh, socially, um, you know, the Kanye West, the, the Kyrie, and all that. So that was also a part. It's all in the, the uh, um, all chess moves from Yahweh Bashim El Shai, because the Heavenly Father releases um, spirits. Israelite spirits from uh, the clutches and the matrix of Edom Esau and, and um it's some it's, it's like um it's in seasons and um in cycles. That's the word I'm looking for in cycles. So yeah, it may it may be certain situations that arise that will have um have this you know the word be exposed to a slightly higher have the word the word will have a the word will have a slightly higher exposure um mainstream you know these things happen because the heavenly father is targeting certain souls and he got uh, the to kind of be exposed um to the truth now whether they uh decide whether, whether they end up um remaining in the truth or going back out and going back in the matrix i mean you know that's that's all up to their destiny and what the heavenly father ultimately got set up when i say the heavenly father i'm speaking about the heavenly father Yahweh, whom the world has <coughs> ignorantly called god and uh, his son, Yahweh Shah, whom the, the world has ignorantly, ignorantly known as uh, Jesus Christ, you know. So basically, um, you know, if you're brand new to, to the doctrine and you want, and, and especially Great Millstone, you listen to, to us, um, which we believe with the prophets of the Lord, um, you know, you have to understand how um, certain things about the scripture, certain basic things that are milk, but yet it, it could be milk depending on. But it could be meat, depending on um, uh, how the Heavenly Father makes you receive this gospel. So without further ado, let's deal with the manna. All right? um, you should already know about the manna, but let's, let's, let's deal with compare and contrast and how um, it works today. And how we still, uh, we're actually receiving the manna right now, uh, just like we received the manna back then in the, middle, in the wilderness when uh, we got out of Egypt. When I say we, I'm talking about so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, and the Israelites, the sons of God, who were delivered out of Egypt uh, by the hand of Moses, uh, so-called Haitian from the tribe of Levi. So, manna from heaven. Um, first, let's go to Deuteronomy 8 and 15, okay? As a matter of fact, let's start at um, 14, all right? <clears throat> it says, Then thine heart be lifted. This is uh, Deuteronomy, second book of the law. It says, Then thine heart be lifted, be, be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy power which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage so if you wake up to this gospel you have to understand it's time to remember that hey um once upon a time you know um thousands of years ago we were delivered um out of um out of a 400 year captivity in Egypt and although we've been here in this new Egypt aka the United States of America the United States of America A.K.A. Um, Babylon the Great. Um, although it's been over 400 years, um, 500 plus, um, there also will be a deliverance. And the things that happened in the past um, are happening again. But it's just slightly uh, more futuristic, I'll say this. It's, it's, it's more futuristic. And it's the final captivity. All right. So it says, um, verse 15, it says, Who led thee through that great and terrible wi uh, wilderness. All right. It was a great and terrible wilderness. You got to read Exodus uh, and Deuteronomy, right? So you can get back into remembrance of the things that happened to us as a people. All right. It says, with fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, right? And so we experienced these things. All right. We, there's, there's moments where you had serpents, fiery serpents, crazy crazy stuff was going on in scorpions now the, the modern day is, is talking about these different um things that are happening as far as like um like in your family you're just dealing with our people you have you know scorpions and negroes wicked negroes um so you got serpents you know these serpents eat them esau so you're dealing with you're dealing with um 
the same thing. You're dealing with the, the you know, because you think about how your life, your life, your life is hellish, right? Your life is hellish because of the people, the people around you are making it hellish. You know, besides, you know, you, you, you yourselves and your actions and, you know, and, and not being perfect, you know, but you also have people around you. And your biggest issue that you have is the wicked individuals of your nation, wicked Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And then you have the nations, right? The heathens. And then you have the top heathen, which is Edom Esau. He is the serpent. And then the heathens are also, more, you know, different types of serpents that are constantly biting you, you know, a.k.a. devouring you, whether it be businesses, setting up their businesses in your um, in your hood and so on and so forth. And the scorpions are the ones of your brothers, the so-called brothers, so-called blood that are constantly either, you know, killing you, murdering you um, or stealing from you, uh, committing usury, abusing, abusing you, all these different things. All right. So and it says, um, and then it said, well, there was no water, which the water represents uh, the doctrine. All right. And we had we hadn't we hadn't had doctrine for 400 plus years going on 500 up until the 60s. It says who bought the fourth. Who, who bought the fourth water out of the rock of Flint? And back then it was the rock of a and the rock of a really spiritually represented Yahweh. All right. And then today the rock of a or the rock of Flint is Yahweh. All right. He's the one who's who's, um, you know, uh, basically, um, you know, giving us that water. I'm going to say that giving us that water. So <clears throat> first, let's go to um, Nehemiah chapter eight and eight. It says, um, so they read in the book. So they read in the book, in the in the book, in the law of the most High distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. All right. So as prophets, we have to cause you to understand the reading. So. One of the things that you have to understand is Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. It says, the thing that has been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. All right. And there is no new thing under the under the sun. So once you understand there's nothing new under the sun, you understand now why, you know, when I was breaking down verse uh, 15, I wasn't referring to the things that the physical uh, things that happened uh, back you know, back then, you know, because at the end of the day, it's always, always going to be about the future. OK, the past, you learn from the past, but everything gets fine. You get all the answers in the future. So when you read these scriptures, you got to get into the spirit and the Holy Spirit has to be with you. So you can see how these things apply today in 2022 and beyond. Right. <clears throat> so now. Let's go down to verse 16. It says, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna. Okay, so we were fed in the wilderness with manna from heaven. All right, so basically the heavenly father dropped food to Israel uh, from the heavens. All right, it wasn't floating in the heavens. It wasn't bread floating in the heavens. It was the chariots that was uh, feeding the nation of Israel. Okay, and inside the chariots were the angels. Okay, so it says, um, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna. Which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at that latter end. All right. So, the point is there. The point is that when we were in the wilderness, we were fed manna, so we wouldn't die. We wouldn't die of hunger. All right. And then the rock of Horeb, you know, saying water came out of that, so we wouldn't die of thirst. So how does that manifest today? All right, in twenty twenty two. Really, it started back in nineteen in the nineteen in the nineteen sixties. All right. So this is Jeremiah twenty and twenty three, because remember, Moses just said that what? Let me read that again. So we can link it. Moses said, verse sixteen, towards the end, it says, and that he might prove thee, well, that he might humble thee. So the manner is supposed to humble you. And that he might prove thee in the manner is supposed to prove you to do thee good at that latter end. And the latter end really is wasn't talking about um, when Israel um, got into the land of Canaan, also known as the land of Israel, and took over those parts. This latter end right here was ultimately talking about the latter end of our final captivity here in New Egypt, in the wilderness, the last wilderness. Uh, which is, you know, Babylon the Great, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and northern, southern America, but most, most importantly, northern America, okay? 
So you have to understand that. You have to be able to make that link. All right. So now, how do you know they? It's talking about the end. This is Jeremiah twenty-three and twenty. It says, "The anger of the Lord Yahweh Bashim El Shah shall not return until He have executed, until He have performed." Mm. And uh, <clears throat> so, like, let me read that again. Jeremiah twenty-three and twenty. The anger of the Lord shall not return until He have executed, until He have performed the thoughts of His heart. In the latter, now check this out. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. Meaning what? In the end times, you're going to understand it perfectly. The word consider means to meditate, ponder, and then get a full comprehension. Okay? The word comprehension goes back to apprehend, which is uh, contain. All right? Meaning you make it yours. You get it. You become one with the information. Um. So now, uh, <clears throat> let me see. Now let's go to... Now that we got that, let's deal with how we get in the manner today. How we get in the manner today, let's deal with that first. We know the manner is the bread. It was a physical bread back then. Okay? But we know the manner today is the word of the Lord. It's, the, it's this doctrine. We're going to prove it with scriptures. But how, how does it happen? It happens via satellite. All right? You have to make peace with the fact that the Bible is not a book of fairy tales. The Bible is a real book. It's the realest book ever made because it's a special book with special words um the bible and technology goes hand in hand do not look exactly for the word technology in the bible but look for words like craft craftiness if you look up the word craft the word craft goes back to tech um actually the word craft goes back to techno that's where you get technology techno and right, that's where you get the word tech all right uh which is craft um, some, you know, and, and yeah, crafty, a craft, all right, a technology. So once you make peace with that, then you understand that the Heavenly Father always, always spoke about the future being all about technology. All right. And that's why Edom Esau, the devil that the Bible speaks of, the way he's going to set up his image, the image of the beast is going to be through technology to his craft. OK, so. The way it happens is like this. That's how we, the manner is dropping today. All right? It's via satellite. All right? And that's why I had to type in satellite to TV transmission. Satellite to TV trans. Satellite television is a service that delivers television programming to viewers by relaying it from a communication satellite orbiting the Earth directly to the viewer's location. The signals are received via an outdoor parabolic antenna. Antenna commonly referred to as a satellite dish and a low noise block down converter all right and i um i was looking out different images but this basically was uh what you get right here so first you get the programming source all right the programming source and um in this case the programming source is um like right now it's um youtube because remember first the heavenly father um through you know through um the holy spirit which um is through his angels um basically give the understanding to men not regular men you know special men read jeremiah 5 and 5 um special men called men of the lord prophets and once the inspiration is given to the men now they are commanded to preach the word all right back then we preached the word and the communication was a lot less um vast because of just the lack of technology the technological advancement you know because it was back come on it was thousands of years thousands of years ago um so now um the way it goes it goes from a programming source so you you're in your house or behind and then you know you got um the youtube my right, programming source your phone or whatever and then you got the dbs provider broadcast center which in this case would be the youtube Right. And then it gets transmitted up to the satellite. You know, it goes all the way up to the satellite and then the satellite will shoot it back to the dish or, you know, your receiver and your TV, a.k.a. another phone, because these phones or laptop or computer, whatever, wherever you watching this video, basically what's happening right now is the matter of your whole body shot is being dropped onto you. And, you know, and that's how it's, that's how the Lord is moving. And um, and in 2022, that's how he's been moving uh, since the 60s. And it's always meant it was always meant to be this way because the Heavenly Father has always been a futuristic power. Um, 
you got you have to understand the ancient times was a baby stage of humankind, beginning with, of course, with the sons of God. Even this technology right here, it's 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 great if we have advanced. When I said we really, you know, begin with Esau. We have advanced in technology, but this is still a baby's technology. This is still in baby stages, okay, compared to what the heavenly Father got, you know, um, in the spirit realm, okay. So this is basically what it is. So now let's get the um, of course, um, <clears throat> the precept or the book to prove it, which is Psalms nineteen. All right, it goes into details about about it so let's read it it says the works and the word of the most high right the manna basically how the manna gets transferred and dropped into the nation of israel today in 2022 across the world beginning in uh within babylon the great it says to the chief musician a psalm of david the heavens declare the glory of the most high and the firmament show of his handiwork all right and so this is prophecy how the most high was gonna um drop the manna so the heavens is talking about in the heavens, right? The sky, the upper atmosphere, right? You have those satellites that receive, right? The of uh, the program of on um, the message, the word from the programming source, which is whether it be a, a, a cell phone, a laptop, whatever you put in these videos, um, you dishing out broadcasting the video, and then you have the receptor, the provider broadcast, which is YouTube or whatever, um, um social uh, website you're using and it gets transferred up to the satellite and it gets dropped back into uh your feed all right and this is the work of the lord all right so let's read it it says um the heavens declare the glory of the most high and the firmament show of his handiwork day unto day utter of speech night unto night show of knowledge it's a multitude of countless videos that get dropped off countless notifications that get dropped off you can't even keep up with it so much manner, so much manner, you can't keep up with it. All right. I mean, it's you talking about the most high, like we being overwhelmed with bread. Sometimes you just look at certain videos and you literally run out of time. It's just not enough time in one day to eat the manner that the Lord gives us on a day. To, uh, like he over, like, you know, that's why David said, My cup runneth over. You can't say the Lord, the Lord ain't feeding you. I mean, there's so much manner that comes out, different brothers. I mean, you, there's brothers out there that are dropping straight jewels, straight manner from Yahweh. You don't even know their pages, man. And the ones you already subscribe to, it's overwhelming, man. It's overwhelming. You know, and that's how and that's love. If 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 you're hungry and all you really want is is all you really want need is uh, one loaf of bread, and then the man keeps dropping hundreds of loaves, you're going to be like, damn, bro, like, you know, but that's the love that your whole body has got for us. You just got to be able to be spiritual and identify how the Lord is constantly supplying, uh, uh, um, um, you know, the spirit and his word, you know, to uplift us and give us uh, courage and confidence and, and uh, um, um, you know, exhortation and rebuke, all these different things. All right. But the only way you have to believe in him and you have to acknowledge his works. Okay. Don't separate the future and the past. You got to bring both of them together, man. It was always supposed to be that way. Um, it says, um, verse 3, it says, There is no speech nor language where the voice is not heard. Right? You have subtitles, um, different brothers with different languages from different places. Um, so you, you have subtitles. You have, um, um, yeah, you know, interpretations. Okay. When I say interpretation, I say interpretation of the language, not a not different interpretation of the doctrine. Um, it says their line. All right, when it says the line is going out throughout all the earth, what is that line? It's talking about the broadcasting line. You see those arch and you see those lines. You see those arrows right there. Those are lines. I mean, it's that simple. It's complex yet it's simple. That's what the line is. If I'm not mistaken, let me see. It should be pulling up, too. It should be. Let's look up that word line. Because I, I believe it was like quad, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I looked that up. Uh, quad. There you go. There you go. So, the line is quad. Quad wab. All right. So, what does it mean? Line, line. Uh, figure to see. String or a chord, right? A string, a spiritual. It's kind of like, um. damn, what is this movie? It's like it's a stream. It's a string of information. It's a chord, right? 
like back in the in the nineties, um, instead of having wireless, because now things are wireless. We used to have uh, wired, right? We used to have cords. You know, even you know, remember back then you had the cable cords, phone cords, to what for transmission of information. That's why the scripture says they're lying. If you're looking for the scripture to say, well, they cable cords, and uh, well, you know, um, uh, the Most High, yeah, how about Shem uh, was sent out. Uh, uh, streams of information via your um, iPhone 14. Like, come on, man, you being foolish, you being silly. You being silly if you expecting that level of detail, uh, you know, uh, in, in the book, man. You being silly. All right? It says their line is going out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. All right? In them, it's like a it says, in them has he set a tabernacle right, for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and was rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. All right. The tabernacle for the sun. I mean, you know, I know it's not talking about sun worship, man. The scriptures calls you. I was shot a son of righteous, uh, son of righteousness. Um, son of S-U-N. Um, it says on um, six, it says, um. His going forth is from the ends of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends and, and his circuit unto the ends of it. What is the circuit? The circuit is, um, like I said, it, it, it tells you. Well, let's read it again. Remember the word circuit. Um, <clears throat> there you go. Right here. It says satellite television is a service that delivers uh, to live in te television programming to viewers by relaying it from a communication satellite orbiting. There you go. You look up the word orbiting. Orbiting means it's, it's an engine or a thing that circles around an other, another thing. All right? So, like, like, the moon orbits around the earth. Like, when you orbit around something, you're, there's a circular motion. Going back to the word circuit, there's a circular motion. And the satellites has a circular motion um, around the earth. And, uh, and that's how the, you know, the information get broadcasted. So, again... That's why I said you cannot separate the future from the past. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is the, the most high. He's the power of the past, the present, and the future. All the technology is his. All right? All of it. From the right-hand side to the left-hand side. All right? So, it says, um, verse 7, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making making wise is simple that's why i said so you got to become wise and this is these are dark sayings but you know now you now you get it right and you don't have to sit there and say well damn man like i said earlier asking for specific details you know you you want the lord to say well yeah the truth is going to be dropped from youtube it's going to be from an iphone or a samsung like come on bro come on man and again if you if you question if you question it and be like, well, that's a white man's technology. Listen, man, the most high, the most high gave us all that technology. And like I said, the technology that we have that's been unleashed on the earth is still in the baby stages, man. Because when you look at something like this, you look at the chariots, you know, so-called UFOs. That's technology of a higher, higher level. All right. The technology that we have is like babies putting a bunch of sticks together. And saying, you know, putting a bunch of sticks together and putting uh, green leaves on top of those sticks and saying uh, they got a house. They, they just made a house. You look at it like, well, yeah, it looks like a house. Maybe an ant, can, an ant can live in there, but that ain't no real house, you know. So that's where we are. We, we've been on like on a baby stage level when it comes to technology. But the Lord has given enough, you know, for the nation of Israel to constantly be fed. But if you want to talk about real ultimate technology... The most has got the real technology. So do not separate technology from the power of the heavens. All right? Because uh, that's how dudes always do to try to uh, discredit the Bible. Well, what about all this technology? The most has a power over technology. All right, so now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 1. All right, it says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. All right. It says my doctrine shall drop as the rain. All right. So my doctrine is dropping like as the rain. How is that taking place? 
How you, it's, it's taking place through phone, the satellite transmission, back to other phones or laptops or TV or from wherever you listening and watching these videos, man. It says, my doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew. All right? Why? Because the thing is, is that the dew is the water that comes from the earth. That's the reason why, you know, it, it, the, the word is coming from men that's already on the earth. Because before it gets transmitted back into the heavens through the satellites, the water actually is coming from the dew. It's raining down. It is raining down first. It goes to the dew, you know, from the prophets of the Lord. And then it goes back up to the satellites. And then it rains back down onto the nation of Israel. That's the process that the Lord got set up. All right. It says, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew. And the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. All right. So, and that's talking about the nation of Israel. All right. So, hey, what is that all about? <clears throat> I got this damn notifications, man. Um... So I like you for that, man. I mean, the way they got these new phones, you're trying to put Do Not Disturb. You got to literally shut down all the notifications, all the different apps, like over 400 apps, man. That's crazy. Um, so now let's go to um, <clears throat> John 6 and 29. It says, You have a shot answered and sent unto them. This is the work of the Most High that ye believe on him whom he, he has sent. They said, Therefore unto him, What sign showeth thou then? That we may see and believe thee, what doest what does that work? Right, man. So like show, show us a sign. And that's what we showing right now. That the work is the most I've been feeding Israel with manna, in particular the elect, you know, with manna for a while. Getting back to the sixties. You know what I'm saying? Through a man called what? Through a man a man called Abba Bibbins, which we know to be the reincarnation. We know to be the reincarnation of, of uh, Elijah, we know, which was prophesied. Uh, John the Baptist and Elijah, which was prophesied, to set, set things in motion for the return of Yahweh Shai. All right, so it says, They said therefore unto him, What sign showeth thou didn't? Well, I read that. Verse 31. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Right? Then Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. All right? So it wasn't for Moses, it was from the Heavenly Father, man. But then Yahweh moves on and said, man, you know what? Let's deal with the future now. All right. Verse 33, for the bread of the Most High is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And Yahweh said unto them, I am the bread of life, I, you know. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All right? But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Right? So you've seen the Lord, but you don't believe because of the fact that how you getting it. You're getting it from men that you might have seen grow up. In your family, all around the neighborhoods, and you look down on the men of the Lord, the prophets, which is nothing new. And then you look at how the word, you looking at how the word is being transmitted through the internet. So you thinking about, well, man, I mean, back in the days. Well, we still doing it the way we was doing back in the day. We still out there in the highways and the edges with our garments. But the scripture said knowledge would increase. And the most side knows that Esau has basically taken over the earth, traveling around like that. It's not something you can easily do. You can't keep a job. Because you still got to eat. You can't keep a job and pay your bills. And at the same time, you got to travel, get a passport, travel to different places to push the word. Come on, man. All right. Malachi 2 and 6, the law of Malachi 2 and uh, 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. All right. Plain and simple. Uh, all right. I read that. So let's go to uh, establishing the, uh, no, nah, that's not it. Uh, I don't know. There you go, right here. Establishing uh, the wilderness. <clears throat> this is Revelation 17 and 3. It says, so he carried me. This is John speaking, right? And this is when the spirit of John gets teleported in the future, basically. You know, what I call uh, time travel. 
because that's what it is. When you get tell when the spirit gets shown visions, when you you appear, you know, you see things that's happening not in your own time, things that are going to happen, or things that have already happened. That's basically the, that's what people call time travel. But time travel is a spiritual thing. It's not physical. The body cannot travel through time like that. It's the spirit it gets transported through time. All right, through visions. All right, so it says. Um, Revelation 17 and 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names and blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. All right, so that wilderness is talking about Babylon the Great, man. It's talking about that woman. Okay? I said, this, so it's in the same terrible wilderness that we're in right now, man, where generations of Israelites getting sifted out, just like it was back then, they're getting sifted out. You know what I'm saying? And before we even uh, get out of that circle and go into the promised land, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's exactly what's going on. So um, what's the last ones I had? All right. And um, this is Revelation 2 and 17. It says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in a stone a new name written which no man know of saying, saving he that receive it. So, yeah, so that's what we're doing now. We, you know, we're getting the manner and we're getting the hidden manner because the hidden manner is, is the, the super knowledge of which is faith and under the full understanding and all that. You know, that's that's the knowledge that's in the hidden the hidden chamber, man. That's where the, 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 um, the chief priest, the high priest, you know, that's where he's at. And then Yahweh Shah said he's given access to his elect to see the things that's in that that's in that room. That didn't matter, you know what I'm saying? So that's in Hebrews, if you want to understand that. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Um, then, you know, the white stone is basically, the white stone is basically a con is congratulation for finishing a race. I mean, if you go back, um, it speaks about, first of all, you want to deal with the fact that you got the, um, 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 the Urim and the Thurm, and then, uh, which I made a video about that, or the Urim and the Thurm, light and perfection. Um, the white stone, you know, representing, um, you know, perfection and uh, light is perfection and perfection is finishing, you know. So basically, if you finish the race and also um, Paul utilized that um, to basically persuade the Corinthians because the Corinthians understood that once you finish a race, you receive a medal. And back then, it's crazy because those damn Corinthians, man, they would give out white stones, man. They would give out white stones. White precious stones to uh, certain cats that won certain uh, competitions, especially um, the marathon and stuff. They would receive white stones and, and stuff like that, which, you know, they probably got it from um, the Bible. So Paul used it and basically told him, hey, man, listen, you finished, um, you know, you run this race, you finished the race. And then the scripture speaks about the white stone. So it's kind of like you made it, baby. You made it. And then they said when you made it, the scripture said there's a new name. Really, it's your name. It's your true name. All right, it's your true name. It's the name that, that was given to you when you were first created um, by Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. All right, that's when you're gonna get that name, and when that name is given, everything is gonna come back. Everything, past, present, future, all that. Everything is gonna make sense on all levels. All right, it's gonna unlock everything. All right, so yeah, and I'm gonna finish with this. This is Psalms. Psalm chapter 104, verse 24. It says, "Oh Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shah, how many fold." are thy works in wisdom has thou made them all the earth is full of thy riches so everything that you see on earth in the upper atmosphere don't give no credit to esau you know esau is just a vessel technology is of the heavenly father and the level of technology that we were given was really for two things it was for the awakening of the elect and also the condemning of the two-thirds out of the nation of israel and the rest of the nations all right so uh, that's what i want to bring forth um, I know you brothers, um, you know, you, you Akim, sincere Akim, and a few sisters that do listen with Edify. Um, Brakate Ho, Brakate El Shah, Brakate Ho, Bashar and Shah, Bashar Michael Dash, that were honest to our apostle, it was a great millstone. Shalom, salutation to you, sincere Akim. Cross four winds, stay strong, stay faithful. Yahweh Bashar and Shah, Brakate Ho, Bashar Michael Dash, Shalom.